This is how to create a VIP door inside of Roblox Studio. As you can see, I own the VIP Game Pass and I can pass through this door just fine. However, for players that do not own the VIP Game Pass, they cannot pass through this door whatsoever. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can go ahead and create a VIP door inside of Roblox Studio. Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I think of a VIP door, I tend to think of three things. The first thing being a door, which is kind of obvious. The second thing being some sort of VIP game pass. And the third thing being a script to actually make you go ahead and run. So let's go ahead and make those three things. Let's start off with the door. So I'm just going to insert a part right here. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. I'm just going to go ahead and scale it out to be whatever size we'd like it to be. Now for a VIP door, this is probably going to go into some section of your game that you'd like only the VIP players to be allowed in. So it needs to be a pretty big door to allow to fit all of those players inside of there. So I think I'm going to leave my door just like this. And from there, I'm going to change the color over to a nice bright yellow. Now let's also change the transparency down to something like 0.5 so that way our part is much more see-through. While I'm here, I'm also going to turn off the cast shadow property just so we get rid of that little cast shadow that was back there. And I think that's it for our door. Let's go up here to the workspace inside of our explorer and let's just go ahead and rename this part to VIP door just like this. Now if you don't already happen to have a VIP game pass I'm going to show you how to create that. So first off you're going to want to go ahead and click on this game settings button and make sure that your game is actually saved to Roblox. If it's not you're going to have to go ahead and click on the save to Roblox button. You're going to have to go through just give it a name nothing else really matters at the moment. And that's pretty much all that you need to go ahead and do. And from there, we can go ahead and create our game pass. So inside of the Roblox website, I'm just on the creator hub, which is the create button. Whenever you go onto Roblox, you can just click on create and it'll send you here. And what we need to do now is just click on the game that you just created. For me, this is the main tutorial place I just created. So I'm going to click on this one. And now we're inside of here. You just want to go all the way down here to the monetization tab. And we're going to click on passes. From there, we haven't actually created any passes for this game just yet, so we want to go ahead and click on create a pass. After we have the pass, we can go ahead and click on this change button to go ahead and change the image that's provided. Otherwise, if no image is provided, then a default image is going to be used automatically by Roblox, which is pretty cool. However, if you have a custom image that you would like to use, you can feel free to upload that. After you have your image uploaded, we have to give this game pass a name. So this will be our VIP Game Pass right here. I'm just going to name it VIP Game Pass. And we can also give a description for this Game Pass if we would like to. Now, for me, I'm just going to put subscribe to Rusty Silly Band, which if you haven't already, please make sure you go down and subscribe to Rusty Silly Band. It helps out a ton and it's completely free. However, if you're making this for your actual game, I would recommend giving an actual descriptive VIP description that talks about what your VIP game pass is going to give to the player. Whether that be a chat tag, access to a certain location on your map like what we're building right now, or any other VIP addition that you would like to add to the player whenever they buy this game pass, you can feel free to add that to the description here. But once you have your description created, let's go ahead and click on create pass. And from there, we should be able to go ahead and use it. Now you'll notice that it is off sale, so we need to go and fix that. Let's click on our VIP Game Pass, and let's go down to Sales. And from there we need to click on Item for Sale, set that over to True, and you want to give the price in Robux. Now you can set this to whatever you'd like to. I wouldn't recommend making a Game Pass that is millions upon millions of Robux like this. That's just simply not a good idea. But I wouldn't recommend making it only like 10 Robux unless it's going to be a really bad VIP. Typically, you'll see VIP go for like 499 Robux depending on the game. But I think personally, like a pretty good price for VIP is 199, rarely 249. It just depends on what you want to do. And it's always best to use like a 9 instead of 250 because it just makes it look more appealing to the buyer for some reason. I haven't actually looked into that, but I know it's true. It really doesn't matter what price you do. I'm just going to do 199 and click on save changes. Now, once you have your pass updated and created, there's one more thing we have to do. So I'm in full screen right now. I'm gonna go out of full screen and you'll notice inside of this URL bar right up here, there's this set of numbers right here. 
Now this set of numbers, this is for the experience that we're currently on, which in my case is the main tutorial place. However, if you go to the right of that, you'll see the passes, and this is what is called our pass ID, or our developer ID, or our pass. So once we have our pass ID selected, we can just right click and press on copy, and this will be our ID. Now, you can't use other people's ID for your game. Otherwise, when people buy it, the creator of the other person's game pass is going to get the Robux, which is perfectly fine if you'd like to do that. However, you probably want to be the one making Robux and not some random person and their game pass that you're using. So I'd recommend using and making your own game pass. Now we have our game pass created and our VIP door created. The only next logical thing to do is to create our scripts. So first off, before we actually create a script, there's one more thing I'd like to add. Let's go over replicated storage, click on the plus icon, and we're going to insert a remote event. This remote event, let's go ahead and rename to a VIP door, and this will be RE for remote event. And then inside of server script service, let's insert a brand new script, just like this, and we're going to rename this one to VIP door server, and then let's go over to starter player right here inside of starter player scripts. Click on the plus icon and we're going to insert a local script, which we are going to rename to VIP door client, just like this. So first off, inside of, well, we can start off inside of our VIP door client since we're right here anyways. And let's just start off right up here. I like to go ahead and create a comment for our services because I think using comments can make your code so much more organized and even readable. That's why I like to use comments, but it's perfectly up to you. And we're gonna start off just by getting the player's service, which is gonna be equal to game, get service, and this will be the player service. And if you're unaware of what the player service is, it's this player's service that you see inside of the Explorer. And you'll notice that it holds players, for example. This is my player. It has a backpack and a player scripts object inside of it. And if I were to play the game, just like this, you will notice that my player now has more stuff inside of it, like GUI and other scripts and even starter gear. These things are all aspects of the player, which is sort of like the soul of the player inside of Roblox. Because if you don't know... A player has two entities, pretty much. It has the player, which is inside of the player service, and then it has the character, which is inside of the workspace, and that is sort of like the 3D representation of the player's avatar. So you can kind of think of it like the body and the soul of a human to the player in Roblox Studio. It's pretty interesting if you think about it. I'm not going to go too much in detail. But let's go down and go ahead and create our replicated storage service variable, which is going to be equal to game get service replicated storage. And replicated storage is the service inside of the Explorer that we just put our VIP door remote event. Pretty much just a little storage bin for whatever you want to put in there. It's not actually going to be inside of our game, which means that the player doesn't have to render it. And yeah, it's sort of just floating around in an empty storage container pretty much that we can't see so it's invisible too and let's go down and we're going to create another comment for our functions and this is going to have a function inside of it we're going to say replicated storage dot vip door remote event dot on client event and we're going to connect a function now we'll later on inside of our vip door server script we're going to be creating another function that will fire this remote event that we have inside replicated storage to the client which is where we are now and this is where that function is going to run off of so let's go back up here to our end of our line right here and we're going to take something called a sanity check as a parameter if you don't know what a sanity check is, it's pretty much something that we pass from either the server to the client or the client to the server to stop exploiters from uh, exploiting our remote events. So we're going to check if our sanity check equals equals to unlock door, unlock door, then game.workspace.vipdoor.cancollide will be equal to false. The reason why we're setting can collide equal to false over here on the client is because that that way it won't affect the game for any other player, which means that 
we can actually go through our door without any other player being able to do so if they don't have the VIP game pass. And this sanity check right here, I'm going to be explaining a little later on inside of our server script, so we can actually go right over to our server script and get to work from there. But before we do that, let's go ahead and we can actually just go ahead and copy our services comment and the services inside of it, because we're gonna be using those same services inside of our server script. We're also gonna be using another one called marketplace service which is going to be equal to game get service marketplace service if you don't know what marketplace service is it's a scripting service that's used for game passes developer products premium payouts not premium payouts but uh premium purchases pretty much pretty much anything that has to do with purchases or monetization pretty much that's what marketplace service is ab all about so let's go down here and we're also going to create another comment for our variables here. Now you're probably wondering, but Rusty, we had variables right up here. Well, these I like to call service variables, and I like to keep them separated from my other variables, but it's completely up to you if you even like to add these comments in at all. So let's go ahead and start off with a variable. We're going to say local game pass ID will be equal to, and this is the game pass ID that we copied from earlier. So we can just go ahead and I had copied that services comment. So I'm going to go back over to the VIP game pass right here. We can just go ahead and right click and copy this ID and then we can drag this over. And now local game pass ID will be equal to our game pass ID that we just created. Let's also go ahead and create a table for our debounce, which is going to be set to a pair of braces or heart brackets like this. And this debounce, we're just going to be using it as sort of a cooldown just to check if the player has already touched our VIP door or not. So that's all we need for our variables. Let's go down here and create another comment for our functions. Now, underneath our functions, we're going to say game.workspace.vipdoor.touched. We're going to go ahead and connect a function to this with the parameter of hit. Now, hit is the part that actually ended up touching our VIP door at the time of this function being called. Which in this case, it's going to be our player's left hand, right hand, maybe their feet. Any part of the player that actually touches the VIP door is going to be used in this function. And since multiple parts can be touching our VIP door at once, that's what we're going to be using the debounce F4 to make sure that we don't touch the door multiple times, thus triggering the remote event multiple times, which would kind of ruin the optimization of our game. So we're going to check if it.parent find first child humanoid, then, so if whatever it was that actually touched our VIP door right here has a humanoid inside of the parent of the object that was touched, which means that it was a character of some sort, then we're going to say local player will be equal to game. Actually, we have our player service. We can say players get player from character, and this will be hit.parent. So let's say it was our left hand of the player that ends up touching the door. If it was, then the left hand's parent, which is the hit.parent right here, is going to be the character that I was showing you earlier. So since the character is part of the player, we can say player service, get the player from their character, and this will be the character that actually ended up touching our VIP door. And then we can check if the player exists, so if the player is there, and not our debounds, square brackets, player.name, then what this and not debounce player dot name does right here is it checks if the player's name is found inside of the table or in this case if the player's name is not found in the table right here then we can continue on with our script we're going to say debounce square brackets player dot name will be equal to true so this is going to add the player's name to the debounce table so that way it won't actually run this function multiple times. It's going to stop right here because the, it actually found the player's name inside of the debounce table. Now let's go down a bit. I'm going to say local success, comma, has game pass. And this will be equal to pcall function, just like this. And we're going to return marketplace service user owns game pass async. This will be player.userid. 
comma, and then we're going to give the game pass ID of the game pass that we want to make sure the player owns, which in this case is our VIP game pass. So, pretty much if this function is a success, which means it doesn't fail, and if the player actually does own this game pass that we had right here, then let's go ahead and we're going to move on. So we're going to check if it was a success, which means that, once again, if it succeeded, then, and, as Game Pass, so that a player actually does have a Game Pass, then, we're going to say replicated storage dot a VIP door remote event colon fire client. We're going to fire to the specific client they want to fire to, which in this case is the player that owns our Game Pass. And then we're going to give the sanity check that we were talking about earlier. Now, the reason why we do sanity checks is because an exploiter can actually fire remote events to the server or to the client, depending on what they do. So since the exploiter can exploit the remote event, we want to pretty much just add like a secret little message inside of our script right here that will pretty much stop the exploiter from firing to this remote event because you just want to make sure that we add sort of like an extra security option that the exploiter would either have to guess or know beforehand in order to actually give themselves access to the VIP door because they aren't actually technically uh, allowed to get past our function even though they can fire the remote event because we have that extra sanity check or layer of security. So we're going to give that sanity check of just a string of unlocked door which is pretty much like the password to our function you can think of. And that's pretty much all we have to do. So let's go down under here. And we're going to say wait three seconds and then debounce square brackets player dot name will be equal to nil. So we'll pretty much remove the player's name from the debounce table. And I don't know about you guys, but this is looking perfect to me. We covered everything that this script does. So whenever the game.workspace.vip door, which is the VIP door that we created earlier, and whenever that gets touched, we're going to connect a function with the part that touched it. If that part has a parent and that part's parent has something called a humanoid inside of it, which means it's some sort of character, then we'll check for a player with from that character. If it was a player and that player is not already inside the debounce, then we're going to check using a p call if the player owns a game pass if the function was a success and the player owns the game pass then we're going to fire over to the client using the vip door remote event using a sandy check to make sure that it's exploit proof and then once we fire over to the client we're going to wait three seconds before the player gets removed from the debounce table meaning that they can touch this again and then over here on the client, once that actually gets fired over here to the client, we'll just check to make sure that we have that password inside of our function. And if the password was sent over correctly, then we're going to go ahead and check the can collide property of the VIP door, and that will allow our player to go through. So let's go ahead and click on play, and we can test this out. So since we already own our game pass because we actually created it, we should be able just to walk through this door right here, as you can see. And I didn't actually anchor this part, so it's going to be moving around with us right here. So let's go ahead and press stop and make sure that this part is anchored. But now inside of our game, you'll see that we can walk through our door perfectly fine. If we were to click on stop though and change the VIP game pass ID, let's just say this was uh one two three four five six probably a game pass that i don't even know if it exists or i own it at least but you can see i cannot walk through this vip door anymore because i'm not actually an owner of that game pass so let's go ahead and press stop and we can change this back to whatever it was and there we are so that's how we can go ahead and create our very own VIP door inside of Roblox Studio. And this can be any sort of game pass. It doesn't have to be VIP. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned a lot from it, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.